On our planet, there seems to be an infinite number of beautiful places one can visit, with an equal number of spectacular things to admire. It requires nothing more than a curiosity to observe what is all around you. The miracle of nature manifests in countless ways, from breathtaking vistas to the simple movements of a common heifer. The purpose of this program is to present you with the extraordinary diversity of our miraculous blue planet so that you can discover these things for yourself. We set off on today's adventure in search of unusual miracles of nature in the Seychelles. In the island's rainforest, we will encounter some remarkable fauna and flora. We will continue to Mauritius, the symbol of Mauritius and of the cruel and inconsiderate colonization of Africa is the extinct dodo bird. We will conclude today's episode in the very heart of Africa, in the only place where mountain gorillas, close relatives to humans, live. The country is the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the province we shall visit is South Kivu. One hundred and fifteen islands in the Indian Ocean northeast off Madagascar. These are the Seychelles. The islands are divided into two groups. The outer islands are more or less uninhabited flat coralline atolls, whereas the inner islands are made up of picturesque granite boulders, have sufficient fresh water, and thus permit settlement. Even so, the Seychelles remained uninhabited for ages. Arab merchants of the Middle Ages knew of the islands. For Europe, they were discovered by the Portuguese at the onset of the 16th century. The very first colony was established by the French at the beginning of the 18th century, who named the islands after the French Minister of Finance at the time, Jean Moreau de Seychelles. The Seychelles were conquered by the British during the Napoleonic Wars. British influence remains apparent on the islands, even though the Seychelles became an independent republic in 1976. A reduced replica of London's Big Ben was brought here in 1903 and graces the center of the capital, Victoria, until this day. The largest island of the Seychelles archipelago is Mahé, with a population of some 80,000 people. Friendship and harmony are the order of the day. Most of the island's inhabitants are of mixed race, the descendants of the original French settlers and African slaves. The majority are Catholic, but Muslims, Hindus, as well as Buddhists may be encountered. The Seychelles represent the most diverse and colorful melting pot imaginable. Everyone, without exception of nationality or religion, ends up at the ancient cemetery where honorable sailors are buried alongside forgotten pirates, masters alongside servants. Thankfully, most of the nature of the Seychelles Islands remains untouched and so there are still places left where no one has ever set foot. Silvery threads of streams and creeks weave their way through the island of Mahé, making their way to the ocean and forming stunning waterfalls along the way.
Water is in abundance. This is particularly due to the Morne Seshawa mountain range. Jutting steep and ragged 905 meters above sea level, it traps clouds passing overhead and thus causes the daily warm tropical rain showers, which were the only source of all fresh water on the island. The giant tortoise surely is the most majestic among the local fauna. It is also the original inhabitant of the islands. With their shells and wrinkly skin, it seems almost as if they wandered here directly from times prehistoric. The eldest specimens are around 200 years old. Carambola, also known as star fruit, is a local star-shaped fruit. While it looks tempting, it should not be consumed in large quantities as the fruit contains oxalic acid, which may cause poisoning and kidney failure in the worst case scenario. Morn Seshawa is just a little over 900 meters high. Even so, it's fairly easy to lose one's way in the rainforest on its foothills. Jocelyn is the very first local tourist mountain guide. The foothills are a home to one unique and endemic plant, the pitcher plant. It's a carnivorous plant which uses nectar to lure insects into its deep pitcher. The local nature is both beautiful and cruel. They produce a little bit of the liquid to attract an insect. And then the insect want to drink, uh, to go down to drink the liquid, and then the plant uh, is falling down and the contagious. Alongside natural wonders, the rainforest offers other attractions as well. This is Michael Adams, an artist, who was honored by the Queen of England herself. He uses shells for palettes and has spent a lifetime trying to capture the fleeting beauty of tropical fauna in his paintings. In the thicket of the forest, he creates paintings that adorn the world's prominent art galleries. Initially, he came to the Seychelles in 1972 for a holiday. He was so enchanted by the islands that he extended his holiday never to return to England again. His studio offers the best of his 40-year career. He captures the fantastic local nature better than any of the kitsch postcards. The coast lined by the warm waters of the Indian Ocean and picturesque white beaches we know from the glossy travel brochures. The slight pink hue of its boulders was the reason why one of the islands was first named Pink. Later, it was renamed La Digue after a certain French research vessel. The ocean provides locals with sustenance in the form of seafood in all shapes and sizes. Sea life is so abundant that one can almost catch it with your bare hands. A net is more practical, although one must watch for sharks as the larger ones could damage the net with their powerful bodies. The Seychelles are a home to yet another unique and endemic plant, the Coco de Mer palm. Its nuts resemble a female backside, and as such are widely popular with the locals who believe it to have aphrodisiac properties. The Valle de Mai, home to the majority of these remarkable palms, is on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list. Some of the palms reach a height of over 40 meters and are more than a thousand years old. Its Latin name is Lodoetsia maldivica, 
and as its name indicates, it's the only dioecious species in the world, with male and female flowers located on different plants. Its nuts, which can weigh up to 20 kilos, are very popular souvenirs, but their export is carefully monitored, and each tree has its number. As was obvious from the visit to Michael Adams, the Seychelles climate favors not only lush vegetation, but also wild imagination. We are about to visit the local hardcore pirate. My name is Antonio Filipin Felice. I'm happy Antonio in paradise. He was born in Italy in 1941, and with his parents, emigrated to Germany in 1955. Antonio labored in the family ice cream shop for 30 years when he realized this was not the life he wanted to live. He set sail for the Seychelles, where he anchored and remained just as his pirate ancestors did, or so he believes. Antonio is a master sculptor and currently is one of the island's prominent artists. He is fittingly proud of his magical pirate abode with its weird yet cool gadgets, all of which he created himself, such as the pond directly in his living room. His bed is extraordinary too, with blinking zodiac signs and a handmade fan. No wonder he feels like a king. You see the water come out like this. Another part of the marvelous house is a bathroom making use of rainwater. Should you happen to be a pirate yourself, Everything in Antonio's is free of charge because, naturally, pirates don't pay. We end our journey through the Seychelles where we started it, in the capital, Victoria. The local market was established in 1840 and is a vibrant melting pot where Creole, French and English are used as one, a reminder of the colonial past. Fresh fish, local spices, fruits and vegetables are available daily. Let us bid farewell to the magical nature and fascinating people of the Seychelles. Mauritius awaits us. Just a few hundred kilometers from the Seychelles archipelago lies another renowned place, Mauritius, the pearl of the Indian Ocean. Its past is not unlike that of the Seychelles. It was known by Arabian seamen, and the Portuguese were the first Europeans to set foot on the island, but unlike the Seychelles, it was first colonized by the Dutch. The Dutch departed at the beginning of the 18th century, only to be replaced by the French, who were then replaced by the British during the Napoleonic Wars. Mauritius became an independent republic in 1968. English is the official language, a fact that is a constant reminder of the British rule. Creole, however, is the mother tongue to 80% of the local population and is a kind of phonetic French. Proper French is predominantly used in media. Chinese and many Indian dialects are also commonplace in Mauritius. Two-thirds of the population are of Indian origin, and the remaining third are mostly mixed race. The island offers beautiful beaches with fine white as well as gold sands, crystal clear waters, lush rainforests, craters, waterfalls, exotic birds, and monkeys. Beneath the surface of the ocean, 
a myriad of fish and corals may be encountered. The dominant feature of the island, the so-called Lion's Mountain, is a place to overlook this miraculous land. A monument of national importance is the Pomplemousse Botanical Garden. Endangered endemic plants as well as fauna brought in from all over the world thrive in the shade of centuries-old trees upon 37 hectares of cultivated land. The greatest gem of the garden is the world's largest water lily, the Victoria Amazonica. The typical leaf with its turned up edge adorns just about every brochure on Mauritius. The giant leaves can measure up to two meters in diameter and some can sustain a child above water. Pierre Poivre, a French biologist, still overlooks the garden. He established it an incredible 250 years ago. Wild nature in Mauritius is also admirable. Similar to the Seychelles, Mauritius was also home to large species of tortoises, the giant tortoise and the radiated tortoise. Settlement of the island has had dire consequences for these tortoise populations. Hungry sailors hunted these slow creatures for their meat and eggs. The turtles in Mauritius have had to be saved using imported individuals from the Seychelles. The swampy terrain is favored not only by tortoises, but by crocodiles as well. Hundreds of crocodiles are reared from newborns to great-grandparents at the Lava Nil Crocodile Farm. A sad reminder of the cruel attitude of the 17th century Dutch settlers is the fate of the dodo bird. It became extinct less than 100 years after the first settlement. It's not true, though, that the main reason for its extinction were hungry sailors. The meat of the dodo bird was not particularly appetizing. It was nicknamed Valkvogel by the Dutch, meaning disgusting bird. The main issue was that the settlers brought pigs, rats, and monkeys along with them, all of which plundered dodo nests. The dodo bird was unable to protect itself because initially it knew no natural predators in Mauritius. Tiny hummingbirds watch the easygoing life on the lovely beaches. The music that can be heard from the shore is Sega. Sega is an original dance of the African slaves who worked on the sugarcane plantations. To forget their predicament, they danced by open fires on the beaches. Today, Sega unites all islanders regardless of their religion or color, and through its temperament and sexuality, it expresses the lust of life of all Mauritians. As the day slowly draws to an end and the sunset creates amazing colors in the sky above Mauritius, we say goodbye to this glorious island. We 
sum up today's journey in search of the world's miracles in Central Africa, in one of the largest countries on the Black Continent. We are in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in the province known as Southern Kivu. Relentless jungle takes up almost three quarters of the country's surface. It is here, in Southern Kivu, that we find the only population of mountain gorilla, an animal which, after the chimpanzee, is the closest related animal to the human being. Poachers have drastically reduced the numbers of the mountain gorillas in southern Kivu from the initial 10,000 to just a few hundred. The park rangers now guard the park and its population anxiously. Some communication codes used by the gorillas are understandable to humans. This is how a gorilla asks, who are you? Mountain gorillas live in groups of up to 30 members. This is the chief of the local gorilla clan. The park rangers call him Chimanuka. He is a big boy, weighing a quarter of a ton, and has 17 wives with whom he has fathered 14 children. The jungle has yet another treasure in store. This one is the cause of many conflicts and civil wars that have recently afflicted Congo as well as neighboring Rwanda. Congo also has an incredible mineral wealth. 80% of world coltan reserves are hidden under the Earth's surface. Coltan is a dull black metallic ore from which the elements niobium and tantalum are extracted. Tantalum from coltan is used to manufacture electronic capacitors used in consumer electronics products such as mobile phones and computers. The men seen here are looking for gold on the riverbed. Gold as well as diamonds are plentiful in southern Kivu. Despite the primitive techniques used, occasionally they are lucky and find a shiny gem or a bit of precious metal. Let us hope that Congo is lucky enough in the near future and that continuous conflicts no longer trouble this beautiful land. Hopefully, it won't take the extraction of all its mineral wealth to achieve peace and harmony. And to Chimanuka and his family, we can only hope your human cousins continue to look after you.